Okay, everybody, hello, Thomas Manton IV here once again. The Lord's been talking to me, and it's like the revelator uh, won't go off. You see the sky and the clouds above my me here. And I just put this in a stationary place so it's easy to maneuver and not be distracted. So I'm just going to be speaking to you uh, while live, okay? I mean live, live on the whatever. The Lord, the Lord said to me... Uh, Continue now. I, I want to make a little analogy. The revelator it 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 didn't turn off. I uh, interestingly enough uh, went to the gym from the last broadcast, and the revelation machine didn't stop running. I was in the steam room a few minutes ago, and I'm hearing all these thoughts. Now, if it was something for me, okay, right? But if it's something for the church and for the world, then hey, I better get on. I better get on and share it. And that's what I'm doing. So the Lord spoke to me about the, the law of attraction. I want to start a teaching on that. The law of attraction. And I want to make a few embellishing points on what I was talking about on the last broadcast. Uh, the, the law of attraction, the spirit of attraction is important. You need to... Uh, you, you need to really uh, uh, get that thing turned on correctly. You don't want to repel good. You want to repel bad. And your lack of confidence sometimes uh, in people or fear or whatever is stopping them or despair or torment, it's because of the, 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 in, the, the mixed uh, configuration of wiring, so to speak neurons transmitters you know and then spirit thoughts mind damage to the subconscious mind from upbringing and problems that happened before and all these kind of isms schisms problems and all of that that just caused you to become a mixed message walking on two feet <laughs> i'm sorry to say that i mean to laugh it's not funny at all but i mean if you don't laugh we're going to gonna cry we're going to cry and then what uh, I just posted something that was really interesting that tears from different emotions or, or, or stimuli have different uh, scientific or uh, chemist, chemist, chemical patterns in them that when they dry, they give a different uh, look. Grief does one. Onions, they've said like, you know, when the onions get in your, or jalapeno peppers, whatever can make you cry, the hot peppers. And then uh, feelings of sadness or joy, you know those kind of tears all have different chemical makeups in them and i thought oh lord that's deep but you know so so things go on in the inside of us and we need to be working on the law of attraction this is very powerful i got this a few moments ago in the steam room in a cloud of steam and thank god i wanted to say this thank god the lord chased everybody out there was nobody there i've never seen the steam room with no one in it uh, especially at this time and everybody was just not there and uh Tuesday night, Tuesday, whatever, and the Lord, uh, you know, thank God there weren't any carnal beasts in there, I don't say that unkindly, but you know, these kind of guys that come, especially when they come with their friend, and then they start talking about sports and all this nonsense and just all kinds of nonsense, I think, why would you want to be concerning yourself with people that are making millions of dollars playing a game, and uh, they... You, you, you just learn everything about it, but you're not getting paid doing it. So, you know, unless you're in the, going to become an announcer or a, a sports writer or in the business or work for ESPN or God, do something and make a career and make some money out of it. Do something. Anyway, just a side note there. So I was just myself and I was just revelating, just flowing. I thought, oh, God, I can't get my phone in here. It'll get ruined. I won't even get a signal here. I definitely can't. It'll, it'll fog up the screen, the screen, the steam. You can't do a message, <laughs> which is another reason, like we're talking about going to the gym or whatever. Like, you need to have your own palace where you have your own built-in gym, own built-in steam room, steam bath, and all of that. You can have that. You can have that. And let's say you go in there, you can have your jacuzzi, you can have your steam room, you can have, I'm attracting this by saying it, okay? These are things you need to do. You need to have prophetic declarations and, and, and discussions with yourself 
and then verbalize them out in the atmosphere in the universe and tell the universe what you want. You know, God is funny sometimes. You know what? He, he'll let you do good or bad. He'll let you do what you want. You want to do bad? He'll let you. You notice he never stopped you from doing anything bad? You notice sometimes he doesn't even stop you from making wrong decisions, though you cry to him later and say, God, why did I make that decision? Why didn't you help me? Why didn't I see it? What happened? Well, you didn't ask questions. You didn't consult other people. You did it all on your own. You think you're, you thought you were smarter than everybody. You were competing with other people. There's a lot of reasons people don't confide in others and find out. I wish I could feel humiliated and have gotten wisdom from someone by humbling myself to ask them something than to have lost something so great because I did it on my own and it was the wrong decision. Are you hearing me? This is things that work on the inside of us. Mechanisms of thought and processes that we need to get delivered from and get over. Amen. Wow. Say a lot on that. You see a lot more of that. And the Lord wants us to uh, attract the right things. And we get to clean up from the inside. I heard a man of God say, Why would I spend more on a car or clothes or uh, 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 furniture or property than I would on building my mind? Because your mind is your world. I find myself buying these little books, Think and Grow Rich, Power of Positive Thinking just bought the other day something about working on the brain you know some brain exercises I don't know how to do that but I'm gonna get the information from someone that got the scientific information they're gonna teach you to make your brain stronger there's things that you could do to do that you can work to build your muscles stronger I was a bodybuilder uh, before I got saved and I the muscle in my body still has memory it's still solid it's still hard I was with dr. Mike Murdoch two Sundays ago uh, the day before on Saturday, he, we had a private session. He invited me into his private, uh, uh, oh, he has a whole office compound. It's 100,000 square feet. Lord, it's, it's, like a, it's like a little, it's like a mall, you know, literally. And uh, he has a whole private wing with all these rooms and offices and dining room and lounges. And I just comfortable. So he invited me there to talk with him. And, uh, that came up somehow, and I reached over, I put my arm like that, I said, feel it, squeeze it. He was like, wow, he told his staff, come over and feel this. It's like a solid rock, it's still there. Have I been curling and pumping uh, every week or even since then? No, it's been years and years and years and years, decades even, since I was in the whole bodybuilding uh, thing, you know? But the muscle has memory built in because I did it once, trained it once that way oh this is powerful what I'm saying trained it once that way so you built a muscle memory you also built things in your mind we need to train our mind people need training we need training we need to exercise things in our imagination we need to make a dream wall you want to attract stuff by looking at it the with the the, the, the the old saying says the eyes are the windows to the soul the eyes are the windows of the soul. You look out and you look in. Things look in at you from what's out in the outer environment, and you look out at things. You ever see people that talk nonsense, so boring, you know, kind of trash talk, ghetto talk, or kind of poverty talk in certain arenas and communities, and, and you have this in all. You have it in Hispanic and white and black and yellow and red. red. I mean, everybody on the face of the earth has different economic spheres of influence, okay? It's not a skin color thing or anything like that. It's groups and communities of people. And you notice how people get this, they talk like you don't even understand what they're saying. It's so bad the way they botch the English language when they speak. Not clearly, not dictionally correct, not eloquently correct, not uh, 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 encyclopedia-wise correct, just nonsense. It is boring. And then you come around the corner, you hear the voice, and you see it's a grown, tall man talking, but he sounded like children that are just scattering and chattering about. And it's because of the environment they're in. It's, not, it's sad. It can make you cry. It's not even their fault. They need training. But some people, here's the thing now. Then the racial thing comes in when people get so hardened, said, ah, if you speak clearly. Now, this is in some, sometimes in the certain, uh, in certain community. If you speak clearly, they said, ah, oh, you're being like the white man now. You're like a white blah, blah. You're like a white one. 
you know, because, like, we don't talk. We talk like, hey, hey, what you know what I'm saying? And you're like, what, 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 what is that? What is that? I, I also, let me, while I'm on it, let me just say something that a little bit touch, might touch a nerve in somebody, but maybe someone will get delivered. This little boy was like a uh, five, six years old boy, and the meme, and he's standing next to a guy uh, that has his pants hanging all the way down off his, you know, down. And the little boy looked up to him, and it had a little caption, and it said, oh, I learned how to pull mine up when I was two years old. <laughs> he had diapers on, and then he would wear baby, you know, babies didn't wear the diapers, yeah? And then they real small. And then when you get it past two, then you're going to put the pants on and the shirt and the little girl, the blouse and the skirt and the trouser and the suits and all of that, right? And they changed where they're, you know, doing the thing. So, yeah, I learned to pull mine up when I was two years old. Like, the kid's looking innocently shocked. Like, what is wrong with you? That doesn't fit. That's not right. It's not normal. You're not supposed to walk around like that. That's a powerful message. People need to get delivered. Also about speaking. What are you going to attract and who are you going to attract by what you're saying? You need to polish yourself up. You need to get in training for reigning. You need to move in the course of your dest- into the course of your destiny by... Uh, uh, training, getting trained, getting polished. Look at Esther. Remember Esther? She had to soak in one kind of oil for a year, another kind of oil uh, uh, for maybe for six, one for six months, one for another, just to get together with the king. And the chamberlains were able to help her get into all of that. How deep and how profound. Training for reigning. And she was going to get the whole bunch of people delivered. And then Mordecai, her uncle, was going to be hung by the evil uh, uh, Haman, yeah? And Esther was so skilled when she told the king what was up. The king said, really? Oh, can't have this. Haman, you evil thing, you. What are, what are you doing? He says, I make a decree the rope that you were going to hang uh, Mor- uh, Mordecai on, you're going to hang on it. And all the stuff of yours is going to be given to Mordecai once you've hung and your broken neck makes you dead. Woo! And this was the guy that formed evil. Let me say something else. Those that are evil and are conspiring against you, God has a way of smashing them down to nothing and breaking them into pieces. Again, people say, can't they repent? Oh, yeah, the the nicey-nice kind of Christian people. Yeah, let's say. Let's do it. Let let, let me give you the answer. Jesus said it's better to fall on the rock and be broken than the rock falls on you and you'd be crushed to powder. So everyone has a decision. But you know what I notice about a lot of people? They don't repent. They don't want to repent. They stole. They'll never give it back. They'll never admit it. They never apologize. I've never seen it happen. Some friends of mine, uh, seasoned men of God, they've made an observation. They said they've never seen a liar get delivered or, or a thief. Truly delivered. People get delivered from a lot of things, but something about that, when people steal, they don't want to be found out and they don't want to ever pay it back. That's one I've seen. And they said also about lying too. That's another thing. Yeah, people lie, 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 lie. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Maybe they can repent, but it's up to them, isn't it? Here's the key to everything. You don't want to be one that's sowing wrong things by hurting other people's lives. And then someone turns around and says it's okay. And they think it's okay. And they think it's legitimate or justified. Or they can get away with it. No, they cannot. God is serious about that. You want to find out what God thinks about a thief? Read Exodus 22. It's all there. Now, you, we're talking about the law of attraction. First, you've got to work on yourself. So this is a little bit of an introduction. You want to repel bad and attract good. You don't want to repel good and attract bad. But these things work magnetically 
somehow spiritually, solically, soulishly, solically by what's in you. You ever see people attract bad things? Uh, have problems, you know, recurring things and all that because something hasn't been worked out and fixed in them. So please, my friend, it's time to get on with it and break the cycles, break the curses, break the generational garbage, break the problems that you had when you were growing up. Get rid of all of this, this uh, junk and get on with God's program. You have to work on yourself. Now I want to make some confessions. L let's say this together. Lord, I thank you that I attract the best people, the best things, the best favor, the best opportunities. And Lord, I thank you that I'm attracting your wisdom, your knowledge and understanding, your counsel and might and, uh, and the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And thank you, Lord, that your grace is bringing me the best of the best of the best and me to the best and the best to me. I declare it in Jesus' name. Next, say, Lord, I, attra I, attra I attract money. I attract wealth. I attract money. I attract wealth. I attract money. I attract wealth. I attract abundance. I attract success. I attract successful people. Successful people will show favor to me. Influential people will show favor to me. Great people will show favor to me. And I'll be in the company of great people. And what I want to achieve in my destiny, in my life, in my career that you've called me to, and what you've given me to do, I'm going to have the best training for reigning in that with the best people that have already done it. I don't need to hang around with people that haven't done it. I need to be in the company of greatness. I've been, I've been invited to speak in a conference. And there's some... Uh, C-listers and B-listers, oh, let's say some C-listers on there. A-listers like the Kenneth Copeland, Mike Murdoch, Benny Hinn, T.D. Jakes, Rod Parsley, who else? You know, some of the name, name, you know, the, the A-listers, yeah? In Hollywood, they call them the A-listers. That's the Tom Cruise, the Brad Pitt, the uh, Angela Jolie, who, you know, big, big, Denzel Washington, who's a big, 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 uh, Will Smith, uh, Come on. Bruce Willis, yeah. Who else? Big, big, big names, you know. A-listers. B-listers would be the ones that are busy with doing a lot of movies, but they're not quite as famous. Uh, but they're known. C-lister would be a step below that. I make this, I devise all this in my imagination. I'm a brilliant thinker. I think about a lot of things. So let's say some C-listers. Known people, not very famous, but known in some circles, and successful in the ministry and I'm hanging with them I'm asking questions I'm learning I'm prophesying to them they're prophesying to me let's go you can't make it you know in the midst of uh, 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 small people that don't are unskilled and ornery and all that and messed up and don't have anything and then you want to be with them and expect to extract something great it's, like, it's not possible it doesn't work like that so that's another thing you want to attract open doors. I'm prophesying here. Say, Lord, I attract opportunities for the open doors that I need to get into the company of greatness, to get into the spheres of influence of the influencers. And when I have favor with the influencers, I also become influential through my connection to influence others because of the favor of the influential. And I because of their like endorsement and favor and, and wisdom and, and, and the touch of things that, that comes through them to me, through me, in favor of me, it just releases me to bigger audiences and bigger things. You want to be speaking that and you want to be attracting that. In the last broadcast, one thing I wanted to say, I was talking about uniqueness. I, the title of that message, I'm going to just write the title out tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm titling that, uh, retitling it a little bit. Seven words and manifestations that I'm very excited about. That I'm excited about. I'm going to make a little booklet out of it in a newsletter. Also, seven things. The first one was uniqueness. Uniqueness, when you're really molded in that and really free-flowing in that second word was freedom. When you're unique and free, hey, you get confidence that you didn't have before. 
you, 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 your confidence rises, your, your self-esteem rises, your, your, your breakthrough level in things rises, and all this work starts on the inside. The law of attraction is not just attraction because you can also send out a vibe of repelling things or, or accepting things or moving things away, even good things, because of, because of uh, things that are wrong inside of you. And we need to really break some stuff. Some curses need to be broken. Some things you haven't forgiven need to be forgiven. Some things you need to release need to be released. Can I tell you a really crazy one? I, I probably shouldn't be saying this in church, but I'm the man for the job. I'm very different, very unique. Someone will get a revelation out of this like I did. I was watching this show about... Now, some of you... I don't even know if I should, because I don't know if you're going to understand it. There was a lady that had a, had a relationship with uh, a very bad criminal. I'll say it like that. He was getting his just reward. I'm saying this in very delicate... Um, I'm saying it in a parable. Some of you figure it out. And it was, he was denying everything. And then finally, she was given some evidence by an investigator and... Uh, part of the you know the law enforcement she didn't look at it for 10 years and then uh, 10 years later she looked at it and he's ready to pay the ultimate price again I'm speaking in a parable because I don't want to scare the children you know sometimes you say too many details saying wow how are you watching a show like this it's a documentary just happened to stumble upon it and she was shouting at him, release me, release me. Tell me the answer to this thing that they gave me. Tell me the answer. And finally, he, uh, he told her the answer. And she jumped up, screamed, and ran out. She was saying, release me. So the guy had a hold on her in his deception. All the deception he was doing and all the horrible things he did criminally. Horrible. I mean, horrific. The worst of the worst. And she was still tied to him because they had this relationship. And... And she wanted to be released. You need to be released from something that happened way back. You need to be released from something that haunted haunts you. You need to be released from someone else's error and sin. You need to be released from something in the upbringing that was bad that happened that made you make you feel a certain way about something. All of this is like you need to be cleaned out. You need a cleaning out. You need like an exorcism and a, and, a, and a flushing out, you know, naturally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, all that. Just, I mean, health-wise, but also, especially in the soul and the mind and the imagination. And work on this stuff and let the Holy Spirit go in and touch areas to fix you that now you're ready to accept the best, be the best, uh, uh, attract the best, you know. Everything can just flow the way God's ordained it to be. Total success. You know, people that get successful, let me say this, the law of attraction. Right? People that get successful, they've made up their mind to be successful. They've gone after, they've, they're doing the things to make them success, themselves successful. They are absolutely committed to it. I mean, to the bone, they're in it. They're passionate. They're, 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 they're sweating the details. They're moving forward in it. They've made that decision. They've made up their mind. You know, it's not by accident or by chance that it's happening. Think about it. Think about it. Attraction, the law of attraction. You need to attract like love and friends and favor. And passion and compassion and love and honor. How do you do that? By working on your inner self. People, are, I, I, I tell you, people get very wounded in life by things. People get very damaged by things that happen in life. They get crazy, crazy. They get wounded. They get scarred. They get messed up. They're full of pain because of broken relationships and abuse and problems and th 
things that mistakes they made or that others made and decisions they made that were wrong or decisions other made that others made that were wrong. You know, you you we live in this world, so we need to live above it. Like the bird, someone there's an old saying: the birds fly in the air, but you can keep them from making a nest in your hair. The birds. <laughs> I don't know if it rhymed when I heard it, but the Holy Ghost just had me make it rhyme. Well, that's powerful. I, I need to make that my own quote because I've never heard it said like that. I don't think it was like. It, it's a rhyme. Man. I mean, that was that's just an original right there. But although I'm taking it from a, an old colloquial saying, the birds fly in the air, but you can keep them from making a nest in your hair. Yeah, use your arms, swat them, swing them away, shout punch them move get out of the way and if they're too aggressive you could just move and step out you ever go on the beach and then you have some crackers or bread or something some kind that seagulls perceive as food and like 50 60 of them will just converge down upon you you might have to run you might have to jump you might have to take a piece and throw it the other way or just back out of the that crazed moment, because they're crazy. They just want to grab that thing. They don't, they're not thinking about how close they get to you or if they hit you or scare you or what. They don't care. They just want what they want. Sometimes people are like that. All kinds of things go on. But you don't have to let it affect you adversely. I'm praying right now. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will touch my friend and deliver them from the worst things that have happened that they maybe they can't even talk about. Damage that's been done to their soul through situations that were so bad that they could hardly even confide in another. A lot of people have those kind of issues. This is deep. And you need to be able to get to the bottom of it. Be strong enough to say, you know, it's all right. It doesn't matter. So what? It happened. So what? So what? What now? What's next? That's the question. What's next? What do we do next? What is next? The only thing you need to know in life, the most important thing you need to know in life all the time, the only thing you need to know all the time, there's a lot of things you need to know in different ways at different times, but the one thing you need to know all the time is this, what to do next. What to do next next what do I do next what do I do now what do I need to know now Father God in Jesus name make it clear make it potent make it rich make it powerful send people to confirm what I'm saying here send new situations of blessing to come to people that are going to be a blessing to them, a fulfillment of prophecy. Yep. A fulfillment, a fulfillment and manifestation of the good things that you want done in their life. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being my partner. We'll put all the information on the screen, replay this, share this. Uh, love you much. See you on the next broadcast. This is the Law of Attraction, Volume 1. I am Thomas Manton IV. Talk to you again on the next broadcast. I'm going to continue praying. I feel like there's a, a stirring in the heavens and the earth for this to continue. The Law of Attraction. You need to have the best because you are the best. But first you need to see it that way. Do it today in Jesus' name. Love you.